Hey everybody, Rosemater here, and welcome to part 23 and the finale of my Steins Gate Let's Play. That's right, we are finally wrapping up this Let's Play. So we last left off with Suzaha and Okabe going back in time to try and save Kurisu because it turns out that uh, the future of the Beta World line is not so rosy. And World War III actually happened instead of the CERN dystopia. And in trying to save Kurisu, it turns out that we actually killed her. So Okabe was actually the one who murdered Kurisu in trying to save her from her father, Dr. Nakabachi, who attempted to steal her uh, research on the time machine. So that was quite a shocker. So uh, we are going to finish this off and, uh, well, I already know the answer, uh, but... Maybe you guys don't, uh, to see if we can save Kurisu, if we have, you know, another chance to try and save her. So, let's get into it. Let's finish off this Let's Play. Someone pulls at my arm. I feel hands slip under my shoulders and drag me away. The knife in my hands pulls free of Kurisu's chest. A fresh torrent of blood follows it. Still warm. Please...目を開けてくれよ。起きろよ。しっかりして、おじさん。今すぐここを離れないと人が来ちゃう。ごめん。殺すつもりなかった。俺は。Someone pulls my arm over their shoulder and hauls me to my feet, then drags me away step by step. I don't have the strength to resist. Guilt and regret are the only things inside of me. I killed Kurisu. Twice. I feel someone push me hard from behind. Next, they take the knife away. My fingers are like solid rock. They have to be pried open one by one. I failed to save Kurisu. Worse, convergence made me kill her. The past has already been decided. It was impossible to change it from the start. Someone drags me out of the time machine. I crumple on the spot, powerless to even stand. Myri rushes over to me. She looks at my face in concern. But even her concern is too much for me to bear. Please don't talk to me. Just leave me alone. オカリン、血まみれじゃん。どうしたん?どうさ、タオルと水、あと服も今すぐ手に入れてきて。え?え?どういうことか説明プリーズ。いいから早く。わ、わかったお。Dara runs back inside the building. Leave me alone. I don't deserve your concern. Save Kurisu? What a joke. Not only did I fail to save her, I took her life with my own two hands. Three weeks ago, in this very spot, I killed her. I murdered her. Mudadatanda <laughs> <laughs>
No, I refuse to believe that, because then the true ending is basically just giving him this extra trauma on top of everything else, like knowing he killed Kurisu. And now also World War III is going to happen. No, I believe we are going to find that space in between the uh, the timelines. I have to believe that. I think we got one more chance to do this, but he's pretty much given up. We have we have a time machine. Shouldn't we give it another try? No, it's not that simple. No matter how many times I try, the result will converge on Karisu's death. Even if I throw the knife away, fate will find some other way to kill Karisu. Maybe Nakabachi will kill her. Maybe I'll trip and push her down the stairs. Maybe she'll just drop dead for no reason. The cause doesn't matter. The effect will always be the same. It doesn't matter if I time leap or if I time travel. Going to the past can't change the result. Maybe a D-mail could shift divergence enough to take us to another attractor field, but there's no way to control what might happen. D-mail is a shot in the dark. It's useless. Useless. Everything is useless. <laughs> クリス<笑> <laughs> A burning numbness spreads through my cheek. Myri hit me. Nani? Oh. She's never done anything like this before. The shock is enough to bring me to my senses. <sighs> Myri looks at me with tears streaming down her cheeks. Her small body gently embraces mine, although I'm still covered in Carice's blood. オカリンは途中で諦める人じゃないよ。マユシーは捨てるもん。いつもね、絶対に最後まで諦めたりしない。覚えてる? マユシーがおばあちゃんのお墓の前で毎日助けてって心の中でつぶやいていた時オカリンも毎日マユシーに会いに来てくれたよね雨の日も雪の日も諦めずにマユシーの横に来てマユシーの名前ずっと呼び続
If Suzahad hadn't taken the knife, I might have slit my own throat in that very spot. This reality is too much to bear. But I realize that this is retribution, my just punishment for taking the godlike power of time travel and using it to distort the past. Karisu can't be saved. That has been proven beyond a doubt. At the very least, I can't save her. Not even with Myri's encouragement. Mudananda. Mudaja. Nayo. Suzaha speaks, her voice full of conviction, and immediately afterwards. I hear a familiar melody. My mail tone. Oh, what's this? Myri takes my phone out of her pocket. She's been looking after it. Okari. Is it from Karisu, maybe? Myri gently puts my phone in my hand. I don't have the energy to check my mail, but for some reason Suzaha gestures for me to look at her. Maybe Suzaha sent that mail? I reluctantly open my inbox. Turn on the TV. What? Turn on the TV? That's all it says. The sender is unfamiliar. Is this a prank? Spam? I'm bewildered. I don't know who sent this. But then I happen to glance at the send time, and the shock is like a lightning bolt to the brain. Oh shit, it's from August. August 21st. The date it was sent. August 21st. Tw oh, 2025. Oh shit. That's when he dies, right? Or that's the year he dies. No. Is this? It doesn't even occur to me to wonder if my phone has malfunctioned. After all, I know this phenomenon. Demon! I look up at Suzaha. She sees my confusion and looks at my phone. Is he being, um, Adaro? Judging by her surprise, I guess she doesn't know much. Suzaha leapt from 2036. That's 11 years after this email was sent. Does that mean it's not related to her? Daru comes back with a convenience store bag, right on time. Fortunately, my phone has TV reception. As soon as I switch it on, I see a news reporter standing in some foreign airport. There's a jumbo jet in the background. Looking closer, I see burns near the plane's tail. The caption says, Fire on Russian Airlines. ロシア Oh my god, I was thinking, uh... Oh, okay. For some reason I thought, like, oh wait, Car maybe Carisu's on that flight. And they had- but I'm like, why would she be going to Russia? Cause, and also, that was in the Alpha timeline where she was leaving to go back to America. The screen changes and the camera cuts to what appears to be an airport lobby. A man is standing there surrounded by a report. It's gotta be Nakabachi, right? When I see his face, my breath catches in my throat. Doctor Nakabachi. I still haven't recovered from the shock of murdering Karisu. The images on the TV seem like something from a dream. Did they say Nakabachi sought asylum in Russia? Well, he's probably going to maybe he's going to CERN with uh, the. Uh, the paperwork, or the the thing that he stole from Karisu, the um, her report. I didn't think people still did that in this day and age. I mean, all you need is a passport to travel to Russia. Ah, <sighs> wait, CERN? Crap, CERN's not in Russia. Is it? Is it in? Oh boy, where is it again? Is it in Sweden? I, I should know this by now. <laughs> I'm just gonna let the game explain what's going on. What happened on the plane reads the subtitles at the bottom of the screen. 
機内が焦げ臭かったが私は全く冷静だったよ一部の乗客が騒いでいたが私が一括してやるとおとなしくなった。Do、oh, I hate this guy? Nakabachi responds confidently. He certainly doesn't look like a man who could strangle his own daughter. 無事着陸させた基地をには三時を送りたいね。彼はこの私と私が書いた人類史に残る論文を救ったという意味でまさに英雄だよ。The subtitles change too. Is that thesis related to your request for asylum? Nakabachi nods theatrically. What is your thesis about? わかるかねタイムトラベルだよ。この私、ドクター・ナカバチがその発明に世界で初めて成功したのだ。ナカバチ's tone quickly grows, grows feverish. Now he's talking directly to the camera. Moreover, he's not just talking about the accident at all. He's just promoting his research. He presents something to the camera. It's the envelope, the one Kurisu gave him. この中だ。この中に私がまとめた人類の夢が詰まっておる。近いうちに学会で発表する予定だがね。その時全人類は驚愕し、やがて私を称えることになるだろう。I have no right to condemn Nakabachi for his actions, not when it was my hand that took Kurisu's life. But at the same time, I can't stop myself from recalling the words to Kurisu,、uh, Kurisu spoke that hurt, betrayed tone that triggered Nakabachi's violence. 私の論文盗むのそんなことだけはしない人だって思っていたのに。Do those words not echo in his ears too? How can he stand there and present his murdered daughter's work as if it were his own and look so proud of himself while doing it? I hear my teeth grinding in my head. もともとこの封筒はスーツケースに入れて貨物室に預ける予定だった。実際そうしていたら。論文は貨物室で焼け焦げ、人類の夢はそこで終わってしまっただろうな。しかし、まるで神が私に、世界にドクター・中町の偉大さを知らしめようと言わんばかりに、こんな運命のいたずらを起こした。中町、thrust his open hand at the camera。その神による技がこれだ。これが封筒に入っていたおかげで、荷物を預ける際に。金属探知機に引っかかってしまってな。私は封筒だけをスーツケースから出して機内に持ち込んだのだ。先ほど基地は英雄だと言ったが、人類の夢を守った真の英雄はこの小さな人形であるとも言えよ。Sitting in the palm of his hand is a lump of silvery metal, barely five centimeters tall. Ah! Oh! Ah!、Uh, I. Is that her, her Upa, right? Myri points at the screen. I look closer. That lump of metal in Nakabachi's hand. It's not just any lump of metal. Oh my god! Did I not tell you guys from like, this was like episode one or two with that metal Upa? I was like, When it got lost, I'm like, that's gonna come back. I had to wait until episode 23, but it happened. <laughs> Upa is a mascot character from the popular card game Raynet Access Battlers. You can see Upa merchandise everywhere in Akihabara, from capsule toys to phone straps and other accessories. But of all Upa merchandise, the most rare is the metal. I can't believe I remembered that. I forget about simple things like that.、Um, Okabe dies in 2035, and that's been mentioned multiple times, and then I forgot about that, or where CERN is located, but I remember that stupid little metal Upa from like episode one. <laughs> the very same metal Upa that Nakabachi is presenting to the camera. Near the bottom of the metal Upa, I can see cute letters written in bright red magic marker. The letters read Mayushi's. Majida! Nanda Soreo Doctor Nakabachi ga? Ano ha piokai no kai jo de ne. 落としちゃったの探したけど見つからなくて諦めてたんだけどロシアじゃ
返してもらいに行けないよあっあっあっ。Three weeks ago, Mayuri dropped her metal upa in the assembly hall of Radikan. That tiny figure, a mere child's toy, went on to decide the fate of mankind. It rescued the Nakabachi paper from the fire. And in doing so, it laid the foundation for World War III. We have to go back in time and so she doesn't get that upa. Suzuha answers with a look of apology. Whoever it, clearly, whoever it was clearly meant for us to. Whoever it was clearly meant for us to see the news about Dr. Nakabachi. It's probably Okabe himself before he died. 2035, right? He'd still be alive, just depending on when he died. Sorry? About what? What is she apologizing for? ちゃんと説明しなくてごめんでもさどうしてもオカリンおじさんには一度、oh, マキセクリスの命を救うのを失敗してもらわなくちゃいけなかったんだ、oh, so、wow. 俺を騙したのか騙したわけじゃない段取りとして必要なことらしいのそう指示された。told by whom? オカリンおじさんに辛い思いさせちゃったことは謝る。どういうことか説明しろ。その必要はないよ。スーザハポイントとフォンインマイハンズ。聞けばわかる。聞くって何をその携帯に。もうすでに入ってるはずだよ。2025年のオカリンおじさん自身からの伝言が。Yep. ムービーメール。その携帯に受信してるよね。は。She's right. When was that again? July 28th, right after I met Kurisu for the first time. Just as I was about to contact Myri, I received a mysterious video mail from an address I'd never seen before. Is that what she's talking about? That I don't remember. I don't remember him getting that video mail. Suzuha grins. Are you kidding me? Is that even possible? I'm not convinced, but I check my phone anyway, just to be sure. And there I find a saved video mail. When I check the sender's address, I realize that it's from the same address as the D mail just now. So they're from the same person. And that person is me in 15 years? 15 years, 2025. The year I die, according to Suzuha. I sent this message on the eve of my death, a message to myself in 2010. Suzuha said there was a plan to reach Stein's Gate. Could that plan be in this video? Myri and Daru peek over my shoulder. I take a deep breath and press play with a trembling finger. Nothing appears on the screen but noise. Nothing has changed after all. There's no hidden message or anything. <gasps> the noise suddenly dissolves, revealing the silhouette of a man. It looks like the video was shot somewhere dark. I can't see the man's face. Unkempt hair, a lab coat, that's all I can make out. <laughs> really? Is this guy really me? My phone's tiny screen has become a window onto the future. I can't believe I'm about to hear a message from myself.
すでに見たならばこのまま聞いてくれ。So that last mail was from him, from me. It doesn't feel real. はじめまして。だな。15年前の俺。俺は2025年からこうしてムービーメールを送っている原理については D メールと同じだお前はこのベータ世界線到達とともに電話レンジカッコ借りを破棄したそうだなしかし俺はお前は1年もしないうちに再びタイムトラベル理論と向き合うことになる向き合ってもう14年それが俺というわけだその過程で36バイト以上の容量を送信可能な D メール送信装置も作ることに成功したこのムービーメールを聞いているということはお前はクリスを救うことに失敗したということだなさぞつらかっただろうお前の気持ちはよくわかるなぜなら俺は15年後のお前なんだからなそうだ俺も失敗した失敗したまま15年が過ぎたよなぜお前にあえて失敗させたかわかるか必要なことだったその失敗後の15年間俺に執念を与えてもらうためになお前はクリスを助けようとして失敗したお前自身がクリスを殺したその悔しさその罪悪感が2025年にこの計画を完成させたお礼とつながったのだその執念があったからこそ俺はこのムービーメールをお前へと届けることができたのだ知っての通り世界はアトラクタフィールドにより収束を起こす普通にタイムトラベルするだけではクリスを助けることはできないだからあえて一度失敗することでこうして因果を作った下ごしらえのようなものだお前が失敗してくれたおかげでこの15年俺はひたすら研究に明け暮れた Alright dude I got it I got the first time you're repeating yourself I want to know how we can go back and save Krisu and expose Dr. Nakabachi ドクター中鉢が世界にタイムトラベルの論争をもたらし世界中が戦争への道にひた走る中で俺は地下に潜って独自にタイムトラベルの研究を続けた鈴葉が使っているタイムマシンは俺とダルの研究の賜物だがその基礎理論はセルンが構築しお前がなかったことにしてきた世界線においてマキセ・クリスが発展させたものだ型式は C204 型 C とはクリスティンの柱の字だ<笑>それが意味するところは理解してもらえると思うとにかく因果は成立した計画の最終段階について話す、yes. ダイバージェンスを変え未知の世界線シュタインズゲートへ到達する計画だちなみにシュタインズゲートと命名したのは俺だなぜシュタインズゲートなのかはお前ならわかるはず特に意味はない<笑>そうだろう<笑>そのシュタインズゲートへ到達するのに必要な条件は2点ある1つマキセクリスの命を救うこと1つドクター中鉢がロシアに持ち込んだ中鉢論文をこの世から葬り去ること
だがその過去を変えようとしても無駄だったお前は今そう思ったはずだ世界は収束してしまうその力が過去改変を許してくれなかったそうだなだが方法が間違っているだけだなお前はクリスを助けることができるいいかよく聞くんだあの日7月28日最初のお前は何も知らずにドクター中鉢の発表会に来ていたはずだその最初のお前自身が見たことをなかったことにしてはならないそれは確定した過去であり世界線が収束した結果だからだだが騙すことはできるどういうことだと言いたいのだろうそう焦るなこれから説明する騙す相手はお前自身だ最初のお前は血まみれで倒れているマキセクリスを目撃しているそれを見ていなければこれまでのお前さらにはこれまでの俺のあらゆる行動がタイムパラドックスとなることはわかるかクリスの死を目撃したお前が D メールを送ったことでそれはエシロンに捕らえられてセルンの知るところとなったアルファ世界線で経験したことを思い出せそこで起きたのはマユリの死だけではないはずだお前は生きているクリスと再会した彼女を無理やりラボメンに迎え共にタイムリープマシンを作ったわずか3週間だったがお前はマキセ・クリスという一人の人間と共に過ごしたんだ今そこにいるお前は今ここにいる俺は7月28日にクリスが死んだこのベータ世界線だけで生きてきた岡部倫太郎ではないお前の記憶にはアルファ世界線へ行きクリスと共に生きマユリを救うために多くの思いを犠牲にして All I can think during all this is There is no way a 2010 cell phone would allow you to be able to have a video this long. Like, I remember, I remember those flip phones, and like, you could maybe get 30 seconds of video and that you could send in a message. I'm just like, I, I, will,、uh, I will suspend my disbelief. <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is about time travel and stuff, but I'm still stuck on the fact I'm like, man, even my phone now has trouble sending videos that are like more than a minute long. So, それがエシロンに捕らえられることもなかったその後クリスに再会した時お前が妙なことを口走ることもなくクリスがお前に興味を抱くこともなかったそして今そこに立つお前がタイムトラベルしてでもクリスを助けたいと思うこともなかったんだ2025年の俺がシュタインズゲートに到達するための計画を立てることもなく2025年の俺がこうしてお前にムービーメールを送ることもなくダルと共に2036年までにタイムマシンを完成させることもなく鈴葉がタイムマシンでお前の元へ現れることもなかった。お前が経験したわずか3週間の世界線漂流を否定してはいけないなかったことにしてはいけないいくつもの世界線を旅してきたからこそクリスを助けたいと強く願うお前がそこにいる
クリスを助けたいと願いその後の人生すべてをタイムマシン開発に捧げた2025年の俺がいる Jesus, even in the future he likes to monologue, doesn't he? Like a true <laughs> like a true protagonist お前が立っているその場所は俺たちがクリスを助けたいと願ったからこそ世界線をどれか一つでも移動しなかった俺ではその瞬間へは到達できなかったんだ。Okay, dude, can you just like tell me what I'm supposed to do, please? <laughs> 全て意味があったことなんだよ。I wanna go and save her. Let me do it. 俺の計画の下準備は完了した。あとはお前次第だ。最終ミッション。オペレーションスクルドの概要を説明する。But well, since we've had a tip, let's see. Uh, Skuld, Skuld, the youngest of the three Norns, goddesses of fate in Norse mythology. Three sisters tend the world tree. Yggdrasil, which has roots in Erd's fountain. Skuld is the Nord of the future, also a Valkyrie. Oh, here's some new music. Change the outcome without changing established events, okay? Okay, so I have to deceive myself to have her lying in a pool of blood. So I have to have that happen, but I can't let her die. So maybe I can kill Dr. Nakabachi and just spread his blood on and then just put Karisu's body on top and be like, there we go, we saw it, but she's not dead. Or maybe I can put spread ketchup on the ground and put her down and then just make myself think it's blood. So that's it. I'm going to go to the Gate. I'm going to go to the Gate. Oh, that's it? Okay, you're just gonna give me this very vague, just okay, cool. Hell, Psy, Kongru. And with that, the video ends. Myri and Daru look dumbfounded. They obviously didn't understand a single word. I, however. <laughs> he has not changed a bit. His voice is a little deeper and cooler, but he's still a huge dork. <laughs> Laughter bubbles up from the depths of my soul. Not minutes ago, I was lost in despair. I was ready to kill myself for what I had done. But now, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right there, uh, Hyoin, Hyoin Kiyoma. Operation Scold. El Sai Kongru. Oh, I'm close to that age too, and I'm still a huge dork, so I get it. <laughs> it's pathetic, laughable, a juvenile fantasy. But at the same time, it feels right. Yes. Good to have you back, my dude. Whoa, Coco Nanichka Yakini Majime Data Noni. Mata eats Mono Okari ni Modo Chata Jan. でもね、でもね。マユシーはこっちのオカリンの方が好きだよ。ま、そうだけどさ。オカリンが変人じゃなきゃ僕も調子出ねえし。ほーい、今日はね。昔マユシーのことも助けてくれたんだよ。だから今
<笑>お前たちそんなこともわからないのか確定した過去は血まみれで倒れているマキセクリストそれを目撃した俺だけそれ以上でもそれ以下でもないクリスが血まみれで倒れていたのを見ただけそのクリスが生きていたのか死んでいたのかについて俺は観測していない It's like Schrodinger's Kurisu. She could be alive, she could be dead. I don't know. Isn't that right, future me? m y r i tilts her head. She still doesn't get it. Smarty, I'm not talking about me. It's a good thing. I'm not talking about me. 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 I, I like my thought was ketchup, but paint works. I just imagine him going up to Kurisu and be like, sorry, Kurisu. You'll understand, and you know, hopefully you'll understand and forgive me, and then just like knock her out. m y r i s eyes open wide in wonder. I give up. She's not going to understand. So, so now? Really? And that's because I'm not the Okabe Rintaro who lived on the Beta World Line after Kurisu died. I traveled to the Alpha World Line and back. I am not bound by whatever effect Kurisu's death may have had during that time. あの日俺が見た光景だけを再現することクリスを死なせないようにしてなそれと半ばち論文をこの世から葬り去らないといけない誰にものを言っているのだバイト戦士よ<笑> Yes I like this バイト戦士 Before he was just kind of going along with what she's doing but now he's full on into it and he's ready to go and he's got a plan あえてもう一度言おうこの俺は狂気のマッドサイエンティスト訪問員今日まである I disregard the blank stares of my comrades and brush back my hair with a flourish すでにオペレーションスクルドは俺の中で見えているだが準備が必要だ30分くれ Suzuha tightens her expression and nods firmly I squat against the roof's chain fence with my eyes closed. To refresh my memory, I pull out the drawers of my mental archive and sort through each file one by one. My actions that day, m y r i s actions, my conversation with Kurisu, Nakabachi's presentation. With those memories to guide me, I begin to draw up a plan for how to complete my mission. I open my eyes once I hear Myri's voice. Yes. Yes, I love it. We got a plan. We're gonna, we're gonna do it this time. We're gonna succeed. I take a deep breath and stand up. Myri's faster on her feet than Daru and I are, so I had her pick up some things for me. She went all the way to the lab and back in the sweltering heat, but she's not even breathing hard. She runs up to me with a triumphant smile. Almost like a playful puppy shaking her tail. In her hand is a plastic stick about 30 centimeters long. I take it and nod in satisfaction. She hands me a banana. <laughs> I guess she's telling me not to time travel on an empty stomach. それは何バナナだよ<笑>じゃなくてそっちの棒みたいなやつ I was gonna say I'm pretty sure they still have bananas in 2036 <笑>これは棒ではなく剣だ我がラボの発明品未来ガジェット6号
サイリウムセーバーサイリウムセーバー赤色のサイリウムだおアイドルや声優のライブには欠かせないんだなこれがだがただのサイリウムではないセーバーというネーミングの通り剣の形になっているためスパークウォーズごっこも可能なのだスパークウォーズ<笑>わーすごーいしかも同時に血のりを生成することができるぞ、うん、先端部分のキャップを取り外せばドロリとした血が溢れ出す一体何を狙って作ったのかさっぱりわかんないけど I was gonna say what a specific thing What a specific、uh, invention that just happens to be perfect for what we need at this moment. Yori real na chambara gokko ga dekil るじゃん Sube te wa hitzen datta. Toyu koto da. Yaro to shite る koto wa wakata. Sono chi no ri o maki se kris no chi ni mise kake るんだね Ika ni mo. I stuffed my cheeks with banana and raptured by my own genius. I don't know, like, me personally, if I was going in a time machine. I would want to go on an empty stomach. I'd be afraid of being sick. <laughs> I truly am a mad scientist. Mwahaha. <laughs> I put the Silium. Silium? I hate, I, they just said it. Silium Saber into my pocket. It's about 30 centimeters long, so it sticks out a little, but I don't mind. I had Daru buy me a stun gun earlier. I pocket that too. You could just buy a stun gun? Wow, that seems. I wonder where people do get stun guns from.、Uh, it's coming up again. Like Hikarashi, there was a stun gun, but that was like a very powerful one. Can you just go to the store and buy a stun gun? I don't know in Japan. Like in Canada, a lot of stuff is like you can't buy like pepper spray, or maybe you can, but you can't use it as a weapon. You can buy bear spray or like dog spray. A stun gun? I wouldn't even know where to get one. <laughs> With this, my preparations are complete. I give Suzuha a glance. オカリンおじさんもう一度あの日へ飛ぼう7月28日へタイムマシンの燃料はあと1回往復する分しか残ってない残るチャンスはただ一度だっていうこといける任せろ俺が世界を変えてやる I followed Suzuha to the time machine. While waiting for Mayuri to return, I asked Suzuha if there was a chance I might run into myself from last time. In other words, the me who killed Kurisu. She replied that wasn't possible. The world line where I killed Kurisu is minutely different from the one to which the time machine will take us. Time travel has a very small effect on divergence, much too small to cause any noticeable changes, but enough to ensure that there can never be two versions of the same time traveler. However, it is important to remember that world lines are not parallel worlds. Ultimately, a tractor field convergence merges them into a single world line. My actions are not meaningless. If I succeed in deceiving both myself and the world, the entire universe will converge upon a different future. Okari? Mayuri leans through the hatch and gently strokes my cheek. I return the smile and give her a thumbs up. I close the hatch as Daru and m a y u r i see me off with words of encouragement. Suzuha is already operating the time machine. Suzuha speaks as she presses the buttons. <laughs> Instead of answering, I close my eyes. I find myself strangely calm. No impatience, no tension, none of the anxiety I felt the first time. How many times have I tasted failure? My hubris hurt those closest to me. My foolishness cost them their dreams. And even though those mistakes have been undone, the memories still remain as a brand on my heart. You've experienced the last three months of the world's world's world. You can't be able to do it. You can't be able to do it. It all meant something. Every mistake, every sacrifice. Without them, I would not be standing here now. From that knowledge, I draw strength, confidence, and pride. The memories I shoulder deserve nothing less. And so, I am no longer afraid. I will reach the unknown world line, Steins Gate. 
His future is uncertain, but that is how it should be. For once, I need not worry what fate has in store. Only one thing matters now. Saving Kurisu. Gravity pulls at my back. Rainbow lights start drifting through the compartment. It's time. This is my Ragnarok. I exit the time machine onto the familiar rooftop. As before, it's empty. I can see the top of the train station a short distance away. This is the third time I've been here now. I run through the plan in my head one last time. Time is short, but I have no choice. I have to do it. No, I will do it. Failure isn't an option. I wait for Suzuha to break the lock, then I run inside just like last time. Narrowly avoiding the first me again, I descend to the seventh floor. Last time I went all the way down to the fourth floor, but not this time. I direct my attention to the capsule toy machines near the landing. It's time for step one. Raynette Kakaru Character Doll Series. This is it. On July 28th, the first me won a super rare metal upa from this very machine. No time to waste. I insert the 100 yen coin I prepared beforehand and turn the lever hard. A capsule falls into the slot. Just as I grab it. <laughs> my heart leaps into my throat. Oh no! Oh, Myri seeing the one he sh- Uh oh. That was Myri's voice. She's already here? I quickly turn and leave the area before Myri can see my face. Luckily, she's so entranced by the capsule toy machines that she doesn't realize who I am. Once I get down to the fourth floor, I check the contents of the capsule. The metal upa is inside. This is the prize that was meant for me. Which means the first me will get... The answer is obvious. Phase one is complete. Time for phase two. I turn around abruptly. Carisi was standing behind me, her mouth open in surprise. My timing was perfect. Leave everything to me. I say no more. If I tell her everything, she'll have no reason to talk to the first me. On July 28th, she came to me during Nakabachi's presentation. She claimed I had tried to tell her something, then proceeded to drag me out into the hallway for further questioning. That's part of my experience. This should be enough to ensure that this happens exactly as I remember. I pat Kurisu on the shoulder, then race back up the stairs. I run to the 6th floor, then creep up towards the 7th floor landing until I can just make out the capsule toy machines. As expected, there's the first me about to turn the lever in Myri's steed. I grinned to myself. It worked. The order changed. Myri now has a regular upa, not the metal one I gave her the first time. And that means... The presentation is about to begin. The first me heads up to the 8th floor. But Myri doesn't move. She takes out a pen and starts signing the upa. Just as planned. When Dr. Nagabachi defected to Russia on August 21st, he had Myri's metal upa with him. If he had a plastic one instead, it should change the fate of the Nakabachi paper. But one question remains. How exactly did Myri's upa fall into Dr. Nakabachi's hands? I watch as Myri finishes signing her name. She nods in satisfaction, then runs after the first me. Just before she gets to the stairs, she puts the upa into her coat pocket, but it doesn't go in all the way. As she runs up the stairs, I see it fall out and roll away. Myri is completely oblivious. A moment later, she disappears from sight. 
I look at the upa lying on the floor. Does Nakabachi pick it up? How? He's in the middle of his presentation upstairs. He doesn't have any opportunity. That's when Karisu comes up from downstairs. I quickly hide in the stairwell across the landing. Yep. Karisu reaches the seventh floor without noticing me. She finds the fallen upa and picks it up. So it was Karisu who found the upa. The butterfly effect. In three weeks, this completely innocuous event changes the outcome of an accidental fire on one of what must be thousands of planes flying that day. By extension, it changes the fate of the entire human race. And I don't even know about it. Karisu looks cur uh, curiously at the upa, then looks around as if searching for the owner. Of course, Karisu doesn't know who Myri is. At this point in time, those two aren't even acquainted yet. After realizing there's no one around, Karisu puts the upa into her envelope and goes up to the 8th floor. Now that I've seen what I need to see, I go upstairs too and head to the employee hallway. I'm thinking, is, is he going to legit, like, whack her over the head with that sword and knock her out? Or is he? does he have to try and convince her, like, hey, I know you don't know me, but I need you to lie in this pool of fake blood for me. Like, how is he going to do this? Here's where it gets serious. I grip the Silaloom saber and shake it silently, thus activating the red fluorescent reaction inside. It'll last about ten minutes. It should get dim before Karisu makes her appearance. I know what I need to do. The problem is that my window of opportunity is so slim. Will I be able to handle the enraged Dr. Nakabachi? One mistake and Karisu will die. No pressure. <laughs> この俺が15年の時をかけて練り上げた計画なのだから、俺は、俺を信じる。この法王院教魔を信じる。Hoi and Kyoma will save Kurisu. I close my eyes and wait for the time to come, hidden behind the same pile of cardboard boxes as last time. I hear the sound of sparse applause from the event hall, which means I should be hearing footsteps soon. There they are. Kurisu has come right on time. She leans against the wall and looks inside her envelope, smiling softly as she does. And now I know the reason behind that smile. It's the upa inside. She's probably smiling at how adorable it is. That smile really doesn't suit you, Kurisu. I stifle a chuckle. I'm surprised I'm calm enough to feel that way despite the current situation. Once Nakabachi appears, that's my signal to spring into action. I'll bring out the Silo Siloloom Saber as soon as that bastard tries to take out his knife. Then I'll scare him away and stun Kurisu. Oh right, the stun gun! Oh man, he's actually gonna use that, huh? Okay, sorry Kurisu! The stun gun I brought should handle both tasks flawlessly. That's the plan, at least. The next set of footsteps echoes down the hallway. Kurisu looks up. I can't see Nakabachi, but I know it's him. <laughs> Even the words she speaks are the same. The atmosphere is far from pleasant. Nakabachi doesn't even try to hide his displeasure. And the first me is probably at fault for that, at least partially. Looks like it's about time for Nakabachi to go ballistic. I grip the Silo Loom Saber and make one final check. 
It's already dimmed down. Now all I have to do is remove the cap at the tip and the fake blood will... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. He thought he forgot to fill it? My breath catches in my throat. In the darkness of my hiding spot, I bring the Silaloom saber close to my eyes and peer inside. The fake blood has begun to coagulate. No, this shouldn't happen. I was certain the liquid would remain fluid for about 30 minutes after losing luminescence. Was it defective? Come to think of it, we never tested the Silaloom saber. It can only be used once before the tube needs to be replaced. Given the lab's financial situation, we thought it would be a waste to use it, so we never did. Oh, is there any red paint around? Maybe you could use that instead? How could I fail to consider this possibility? If I'd had half a brain, I would have brought a spare. This is bad. The plan is falling apart. Nakabachi's shrill shriek startles me. Time won't stop for me. How do I recover from the setback? I can't leave. Nakabachi's about to attack his daughter. If I make my appearance after that, it'll be the same as last time. I'll end up killing Kurisu again. No matter what, I can't let that happen. What do I do? Do I go back to the time machine and try again? No. Remember what Suzuha said? There's not enough fuel for another trip. This is my last chance. ね。久しぶりに会ったことだし、色々と話したいんだけど。パパは今青森に住んでるんだっけ? My heart is pounding. I'm sweating like crazy. It feels like I've just run a marathon. I cover my mouth to suppress the sound of my breathing. Nakabachi is about to snap. Events are proceeding just like last time, barreling inexorably towards disaster. Please, I find myself begging. Make time stop. But another voice from within answers. Are you praying, Hoin Kyoma? Have you forgotten? Change the future. Deceive the world. I won't court the mercy of a heartless god. I will save Kurisu myself. She won't die again. Not at my hands. Not at anyone's. Nakabachi strikes Kurisu on the cheek. It's starting. Nakabachi puts his hand around Kurisu's neck. Her cries of agony fill my ears. There's still a way to prevent Kurisu's death. That puddle of blood I saw beneath Kurisu's, uh, Kurisu's body. There's one more way to reproduce it. Oh, maybe Nakabachi's blood? One more way. One last chance. It's a gamble, to be sure. Even if it succeeds, I don't know what effect it might have on the Steinsgate Gate Or maybe... Maybe he'll use his own blood. 
<笑>お前に私の気持ちがわかるかなぜお前はそんなに優秀なのだ私はお前が憎い存在そのものが疎ましいのだよ私より優秀な人間などこの世にいてはならんのだわかるか屈辱なのだ娘が親より優秀でいい道理などないだから遠ざけたお前と親子だと思われるのが耐えられなかったお前がいたせいでお前のせいで It matters not I am Hoyan Kiyoma the mad scientist who defies God My true desire is chaos I have no need for a predetermined future よせ Calmly I step out from my hiding spot Nakabachi looks at me in disbelief. His eyes are wide and bloodshot. Nakabachi lets go of Kurisu. クリスと示し合わせていたなそうだそうなんだろう許さん許さんぞガキども Nakabachi pulls the knife from his pocket Its blade reflects cold light Once I see that glint I laugh disdainfully やってみるがいいこそ何者だ我が名は法院教馬何知らないなら覚えておけ。<笑>フェニックスの法王にいい。そして、凶悪なる真実で、法王に今日だ。俺は混沌を望むもの。世界の支配構造を破壊するもの。そして、お前の野望を打ち砕くもの。Kurisu staggers to her feet with her hand to her neck. I dismiss Kurisu's plea and instead turn to Nakabachi with my arms spread wide. I think. See, I don't know. If... <laughs> would that work? Would would having would himself being injured and having his own blood work, or would that change the timeline because he wasn't injured in the previous timeline? Hmm. It seems like that's what he's leaning towards. Is he wants to get himself bloody so he can use his own blood? Nakabachi goes into a frenzy. He charges me with his knife point first. Nakabachi's completely lost his mind. I can see it in his eyes. He won't stop. And if he won't stop, then I'll stop him. Yep, with my own body. He'd better not die here. That would definitely change the timeline. Oh, I don't want that. He sacrifices himself for Kurisu and Mayuri and everyone else. Uh. Intense pain rips through my abdomen. I feel the cold seals, steel stink into my body. He did it. He stabbed me with the knife that killed Kurisu. The pain flares. It feels like my insides are being torn out. <coughs> Nakabachi yanks out the knife. Blood gushes from the open wound. <coughs> oh, please don't die. I don't think he- I don't think he's allowed to. He has to be able to see this in order to change- But then again, what if he just sees Kurisu, but then he dies afterwards? Would that work? The iron taste of blood spreads through my mouth. Pain threatens to steal away my consciousness. My body's on fire. My vision blurs. I struggle desperately to stay on my feet. Zama <laughs> I whip out the stun gun and switch it on. The electric arc crackles to life inches away from Nakabachi's face. He instantly turns pale. 
<laughs> I spear him with my glare and take a step forward. A wave of nausea surges over me. <laughs> Blood spews from my throat. Jesus, but I don't look away. I keep my eyes fixed on Nakabachi. <laughs> よく<笑> I was going to say, this is the right thing to do because we need Carisu to not run away. I don't think she would leave her father, but Carisu runs up to me. She holds me and supports my body. And zap. <laughs> what is she doing trying to help me? Didn't she hear me threaten to kill her? You're too soft-hearted for a tsundere. Back when I was trying to save Mayuri, you were always the one who saved me. So this time... Oh my God. Karisu convulses. Strength leaves the leg she used to support me. She collapses. Yeah, no, Nakabachi's gonna be like, this dude is fucking insane. I'm out of here. I'm outie. I'm sorry. I send her my silent apology. Nakabachi. <laughs> <laughs> he out crazy Nakabachi. Nice. Nakabachi tosses his knife away with a pitiful cry. He takes a step back, two steps back. Firing the stun gun once more does the trick. Nakabachi turns and flees down the hallway towards the elevators. But first, he makes sure to pick up the envelope Karisu dropped. How shrewd of him. <laughs> come on, my dude, you gotta survive. You promised Myri you'd come back. I touch my wound. Ugh. <laughs> come on, where are you, Suzaha? The lightest touch sends pain coursing through my body. I fall to my knees. I feel faint. The bleeding won't stop. The blood is starting to pool on the floor. I press my hands into the blood. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Oh, poor, poor Rintaro. <laughs> poor Okabe. I reach for my stomach wet and glistening with blood. I take a breath. Oh, to drive my fingers into the wound. <laughs> oh man. The pain is like nothing I've ever experienced. Unable to bear it, I throw back my head. I scream until my throat is raw. I can't stop now. Fighting against the urge to faint, I feed strength into my hands and pull the wound wider. <laughs> this is ooh, this is rough. And nobody's hearing this, huh? My blood paints the floor crimson. Please let that be Suzaha. Yes, good. Suzaha runs up to me. <laughs> Maybe he's like, I can't die. This was, uh, you know, this is fate. This is, this is my plan. I can't fail. I will not die. <laughs> Oh, 
十分な出血量だそう思うだろう She looks down and beholds my masterpiece. To deceive myself, to deceive the world. The stage is set. If convergence holds, then it's already determined that I don't die, not here. I die in 2025 as a fixed event on the Beta World Line. That was my bet. I intentionally provoked Nagabachi to rage. I took the knife meant for Karisu and survived. The wound gave me what I needed to carry out the plan. Though I have to admit, I didn't think it would hurt this much. There's no telling what will happen when we reach Steins Gate. The future of that world line is still undecided. There's no reason it can't include my death. How ironic. I made a bet based on the guarantee that I wouldn't die, but winning that bet makes death a very real possibility. I twist my lips into a smile. Time to put the finishing touch on my masterpiece. <laughs> Suzuha picks up the unconscious Karisu. Then she lays her face down on the top of my blood puddle. Karisu doesn't wake up. She's perfectly still. But she's definitely breathing. I stroke her hair gently. Even if we reach Steins Gate, even if Kurisu lives, even if I don't die, we'll never meet again. Kurisu will never join the lab. We'll never build the time leap machine together. I want to believe that somehow on the Steins Gate, maybe they'll meet up under different circumstances. But still, I'm glad I was able to save her. Sayonara. Please stay unconscious for a while. I need you to deceive the first me. While Suzuha goes to pick up the knife, I use the wall to climb to my feet. <laughs> So when we jump in this time machine and we go back, are we going to go back to a different world? Oh boy, and how is the uh, how how are the effects of uh, time leaping going to affect his body? Ugh. I feel pressure crush my body. My wound throbs. I feel like groaning, but I bite my lip and bear it. Rainbow light fills my vision. The time machine is activating. Suzuha wraps my wound with a towel. おじさん。この先にはさ、きっとシュタインズゲートが待ってる。私もおじさんも誰も知らない世界が待ってる。おじさんは生きていて。マキセクリスも生きていて。
シーナマよりも生きていて私は2010年にタイムトラベルしてくることはなくて第三次世界大戦が起きるかどうかは分かんない世界線だけどシェルンのディストピアが構築されるかどうか分かんない世界線だけど Someone's warm hand grasps mine tightly, tightly. 未来にはさ希望が満ちてるって信じられるような世界が待ってるよ I slowly close my eyes. It's hard to breathe, but my pain feels distant now. Once we arrive, I'll probably disappear. I won't be able to thank you for bringing me to Stein's Gate. So, I'll say it now. The warmth of her hand slowly fades. Arigato. Ojisa. Shinanai de. Ikite. Desa. Kitto nananen go ni. Aou ne. I want to see what happened. What happened? It's time to go home. Myri and Daru are waiting. And with them, a future that is yet to be written. Don't leave it. Don't leave it open ended. I want to see what happens. I want, like, a whole thing. I want to see what all the characters are up to. No! No! There's got. Come on, there's got to be something afterwards, right? No, you can't- because I know there's nothing after this. This was the true ending. Ah... Uh, I know there's a sequel. Steins Gate Zero, I think. I don't know if that's a sequel or a prequel. But please give me- give me more than that. Come on. I need some closure. Ah! Okay, here we go. There we go. We got we got the convergence. Let's see it. Come on, give me something. Yes, here we go. It's been a month since then. My wound was deep enough to require surgery. If I'd been just one hour late getting to the hospital, I would have died from blood loss. The doctor laughed as he told me this. Hilarious. After being cooped up in the hospital for so long, it's exciting to be walking around to Akiba again. I look around to see if Akiba is any different from what I remember, but nothing catches my eye. I just get the feeling that there are more moe shops than before. Mysteries of divergence. I chuckle to myself, then dig into my pocket. Oh, it's the upa! Something jingles. Or not. Okay, there are metal pins inside. Eight of them. The Future Gadget Laboratory's member badges. They're designed based on the pin Suzaha brought from the future. Which world line Suzaha was that again? Anyway, back then we searched all over Akiba for that pin. And while I was hospitalized, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to ask Daru to have them made. And of course, the one we commissioned to make them was that shady foreign street vendor. The final product is slightly different from Suzaha's, but it's pretty well done. I pass through the archway of Yanabayashi Shrine and head to the courtyard. There, brandishing a, short, a sword with sublime dignity, stands a Miko. The Miko is so lovely that anyone would doubtless stop to stare. But that's not a Miko, and that's not a real sword. That sword is a 980 yen imitation, and that beautiful Miko is a guy. Lukako lifts his head at the sound of my footsteps. <gasps> as soon as our eyes meet, he runs up to me in a fluster. His eyes are already wet with tears. Ah, 
無事に退院できてよかったです僕僕嬉しい And then he starts crying in earnest. Seeing his tears, I feel an urge to pat his head and tell him everything will be alright, but I resist and sigh instead. We missed it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Myri filled me in on the situation. After years of persistent nagging, she finally convinced Lukako to cosplay near the end of summer break. The best part of this of the Steins Gate. We finally got to see well, we didn't get to see Luca, but he did it. It wasn't in time for Komima, but he wore one of Myri's costumes to a cosplay event in early September. His cosplay debut was effective. Dozens of photographers took his pictures, and the image soon went viral on the net. Aw. Try to look up pictures of Lukako now, and you'll get a ton of hits. He's being swarmed by fans. And since he's what they call a trap, he's popular with girls, too. There are some things in this world I just don't understand. だが、お前のコスプレ姿、俺も生で見てみたかったぞ。無理です。岡部さんになんてそんな恥ずかしくて死んじゃいます。だが楽しかったのだろう。He's overcome his feelings of inadequacy and accepted himself for who he is. And he even had fun doing it. He truly is a worthy disciple. それさえ得すれば次なる目標は精神三馬流の極意継承それさえ得すれば I reach into my pocket and take out a pen. Dabomen number 006. Oh, this might be actually a, quite a long ending because he's got to hand them out to everybody. Oh, I know he probably won't see Kurisu because she's probably in America, but I want so desperately, so desperately for him to see her again. Lukako nervously accepts the pen with a confused expression. ラボメンにいつ入ったんでしょう。その記憶ははるかかなた。あるいは前世まで遡るかもしれない。ぜ、前世？お前は生まれた時からすでにラボメンだったのだ。故に誇るがいい。It's not an exaggeration. It's the truth. Lukako most likely doesn't remember. But it's okay, even if I'm the only one who does. <sighs> he starts crying again. He bows his head. それは世界にたったの8個しかない貴重なものだ。お前を最悪から守ってくれるマジックアイテムでもある。え、そうなんですか？No。だからなくすなよ。Lukako nods with a joyful smile on his face. Too cute. And Ferris. I pass through May Queen's door for the first time in forever. Ferris runs over to greet me. She suddenly links arms with me. 
At first I get a little flustered when something soft touches my elbow, but then I break into a cold sweat once I feel the murderous glares of the surrounding Ferris fans. I tear Ferris off of me and take a deep breath. I see she's still making up her own backstories for people. It boggles the mind that this crazy cat girl is behind the redevelopment of Akihabara. Maybe the world's just messed up. She shows me to my table where I order iced coffee. No doubt the recent explosion of Moe shops is her doing. I think she's just getting a little carried away. <laughs> I love these two together. They're both so weird. What the hell does she mean by karma? Over the past month, Ferris has started participating in Raynet Access Battlers tournaments. Ferris is the chairman of the Akihabara Redevelopment Project, a high school student, a popular waitress at a maid cafe, the president of the company founded by her father, and the head of the Akia family. She should be incredibly busy, but I guess she just couldn't stay away from Raynet forever. Anyway, she went to her very first official tournament and snatched a dramatic victory. Ferris is even more cheerful than usual now. I guess all it takes to feel fulfilled is to do the things you like to do. I take a pin out of my pocket and present it to Ferris. I don't really get what's going on, so let's just nod for now. It's amazing how she come up with these things on the fly. So, assuming he's got eight of them, that means he's going to give one to Moako, which is going to be weird because on this timeline, did they ever meet? Because, like, he's friends with all of these people before all this stuff happened, but, like, Moka's going to be very confused. Ferris and I smile at each other. And then we high-five. When I get back to the lab, I'm startled to find an unexpected visitor. Oh, yep. Oh, Okabe. Ome tain shanoga. Eh. Ma. Tanuji, Yugo, and I are standing out front. Kiria Moka is with them. The rounders who killed Myri on another world line. Nai hides behind her father when she sees me, like usual. So, so. Tanuji indicates Moaka with his chin. <laughs> Moaka bows her head. She's silent as always, but at least she's not holding her phone. I guess that's some improvement. <laughs> Shiatsu? Dare da sorea? 
I point to Moaka. Shining finger. <laughs> Tanuji and Moaka ignore me completely. Oh, okay. Never mind, I guess they do know each other. I got a thank you email from her during my stay in the hospital. That email helped me figure out our relationship on this world line. So she's still looking for one, even though, uh, by CERN, I... Are they still trying to do time travel with it? Moaka shakes her head. Is she まあ、working with them? Or now does she have a reason to look for it uh, for her own personal reasons? Did Tanuji tell her who he is? I thought Moaka wasn't supposed to know FB's true identity. Well, quite different from Nai stabbing her before. <laughs> Nai speaks up in a tiny voice. なるほど。お見合いか。バカかてめえ。俺が愛してんのは苗とブラウン管だけなんだよ。で、無職だっつうからそんなら娘が世話になったことだし、うちで働けって話になったわけだ。まさかうちの店でバイトを雇うことになるとはな。前にも雇っていたじゃないですか。あ、何寝ぼけたこと言ってんだ。じゃこれ
Daru pops out of the development room in, his ro in all his rotund glory. I wonder if he's making a new feature gadget. <laughs> Mayuri suddenly puts on a pout. マユシとダル君で病院に行ったらもう退院しましたって看護師さんに言われちゃったんだから。なあ、せいろかったよ、なあ、す。僕がオカリンの代わりに入院したかった。マユリ。お前は俺の保護者になったつもりかずいぶん
緒にシュタインズゲートにたどり着いたことをお祝いすることはできないはずだからここでお礼を言っておくよありがとうおじさん死なないで生きて Just as she predicted, Suzuha vanished the moment we returned to August 21st. Right before my very eyes, the time machine was enveloped in rainbow light and disappeared. She was smiling as she faded away. That was proof I had reached Dine's Gate. And that's why I don't mourn Suzuha. <laughs> I don't know what the future will bring. There's still the possibility that Daru won't get married, that Suzuha won't be born. But still, I believe that in seven years we will meet again. And that's when I will give her this pin, her birthright, as Lab Mem 008. Until then, I'll keep it in a safe place. I aimlessly head out to town alone. Why do I have a feeling he's going to run into Kurisu while he's out and about? I want to get a better look at the Steinsgate world line. But try as I may, I can't find anything drastically different. Way back when, Ferris's D-mail erased the Moe shops from Akiba. That time, it was obvious that the world had changed. I feel unsatisfied, so I looked up at Radikan. Obviously, there's no satellite stuck in the roof. It's open for business as usual. When I arrived on this world line, right after I saw Suzuha disappear, the very first thing I did was ask Maru and Daru a question. Have there been any murders at Radikon? As they panicked at the sight of my blood-stained body, they answered that no one had been murdered at Radikon. As we waited for the ambulance to arrive, I had Daru call up the news on my phone. They were running the story about Nakabachi's flight to Russia. Oh, I want to see what happened with this douche. His stuff all got burnt up, or I should say Kurisu's stuff got burnt up. This time, Nakabachi looked terribly agitated. His eyes were bloodshot, he was yelling, spraying spit everywhere. His appearance was strikingly similar to how I last saw him in the hallway of Radikon. To me, his unintelligible rambling was evidence of Operation Scold's success. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and then he gets put in prison. Good. The subtitles read, What was your thesis about? The screen immediately returned to the studio where a female reporter continued. ロシア日本名した。ドクター中淵氏こと、マキセ翔一氏が。ゴッド。モスクワのドモジドボ国際空港に到着直後、ロシア当局に拘束されたもようです。なお、警視庁は7月28日に秋葉原で起きた障害事
Carissa was still alive, that much is certain, but I haven't had any contact with her since then. Aside from a few words we exchanged at Radicon, the current Carissa and I are strangers. Besides, I was bedridden, so it's not like I could have gone to see her even if I'd wanted to. Carissa said she was supposed to go back to America in August. That was on the Alpha World line, so things may have changed. But what reason would she have to stay in Japan after what her father did to her? I thrust my hand into my pocket. Two pins remain. One of them is for lab number 001. That's me. The remaining badge, which belongs to lab member 004, may never reach its rightful owner. But Karisu is alive, and that's good enough for me. I once chose to let her die. I once killed her with my own two hands. But this time I was able to save her. No one remembers those three weeks we spent with Karisu. No one but me. I will remember. I will never forget. So I don't need anything else. I don't want anything else. Hey, Karisu. I don't know what the future holds. War may still break out. CERN may still complete their time machine. But at the very least, the future is undecided. We're building it now, from the bottom up. Not just me, not just you, but every man, woman, and child. So keep on watching, whenever in this wild world. So keep on watching, wherever in this wide world you may be. I take out my own pin and fasten it to my chest. I walk through the sea of shoppers, staring straight ahead. Oh, <gasps> yes! Yes! I was hoping! I was hoping! Oh. I quickly turn around. Just now, in the corner of my eye, I saw her. The girl who shouldn't be here. Her long hair fluttered as she passed me by. There. A familiar figure. I'd recognize that back anywhere. She has stopped, too, in the middle of the sidewalk. Slowly, slowly, she turns to face me. She's like, D didn't you stun gun me? <laughs> oh, but this is really sweet. Oh, I hope that she knows I did it to save her. It's her. I thought she had gone back to America. It's her. She doesn't even know me. <laughs> that voice. That face. That hair. Those eyes. Makase Kurisu is standing there, the same as I remember her. あなたを <laughs> Karisu looks so radiant as she tries to hold back her tears. Just when I thought I'd finally suppressed it, all my love for her flows out at once, and then he does something weird, he hugs her, and then she's like, uh, uh, no, no, I just wanted to thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy that I want to cry too. So to hide my embarrassment, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. And then she's like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> I close my phone and clear my throat. I have no idea what to say. She's still staring at me with those wide, pleading eyes. I open my mouth. What? What? How does she know? What? What? Wait. Now I really have no idea what to say. How does this Carisu know about that? Those were the names I used to tease Carisu. She always got mad whenever I used them. They were our bond, our private joke. But I had yet to use them on the day we met at Radicon. So how could this world line's Carisu know? What? I... I... I...
It looks like Carissa is as confused as I am. She stares at me, bewildered. And then I finally realized the truth. Everyone has reading Steiner. Even if the world line changes, even if the past and the future are rewritten, your memories remain. You've merely forgotten. All it takes is a push and you can remember. Is this like, is this their kind of way of explaining like when you get deja vu, it's just you remembering something from like a world line that may or may not have happened? The memories of those lost three weeks. The memories we made together. I reach into my pocket and take out the last pin. Nobody knows what the future holds. And that is why, just as this reunion demonstrates, the possibilities are endless. I place the pin in Carissa's hand. I gently close her hand in mine. And holding back my tears, I tell her, Oh my goodness. Whoo! We did it, guys! I believe that's it. 100% completion. All endings achieved. That one was great. Oh. I got, I got my, uh, my satisfaction of being able to have, like, all the characters... You know, you get to see what happened to them afterwards. They all grew a little bit. Dr. Nakabachi got his just desserts. And Kurisu and Okabe reunited and she remembers him, which is amazing. Like, I thought if... I was like, maybe even if he sees her in this, tr like, this uh, Steins Gate world line, like, she's going to have no idea who he is, but he's going to just be happy that she's alive. And that would be enough. But the fact that she remembers him and that she can have a relationship with him and she can come to the lab and oh that makes me so happy okay well that will do it guys for this let's play of steins gate i really enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed my let's play as well i do know that there is a game after this uh, steins gate zero and i may be playing that down the line but what i will be doing after this is a little bit different it's not going to be a let's play but what i will be doing is i'm going to be starting my higurashi anime reaction videos and I'm going to try and do two a week uh, so I'm either going to try and do two episodes in one day and have them on the Monday as my Steins Gate or I'm going to do like maybe a Monday Monday and a Thursday or something like that I'll still have to figure out the scheduling for that but yeah so I'm going to be going through the new Higurashi anime and reacting to them and then after that, uh, I'm not quite sure what my next Let's Play will be. You guys can, of course, always recommend suggestions to me in the comments or on my Twitter if there's any Let's Plays you'd like to see from me. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching my Steins Gate Let's Play, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons. Nana, Sparky, iCognito, Mad Goldsmith, Harry Gaziff, and Asborn Kennedy.